So you'll go on the far side. Hello, everyone. Is this, can you hear me? Hi. What a warm introduction. Um, my name is Dana Vetter. I work on music programs on YouTube. And I am thrilled to be joined by Brad Paisley. Hi. Not much introduction needed. I think we have a lot of fans in the audience, but acclaimed um, singer, songwriter, guitarist, musician, critically acclaimed awards, etc. So thank you so much for joining us at Google. Is that where we're at? We are at we are we are at the Google Plex here. So you're. Um, let's just get started since I know you just got off the plane. Let's just dive right in. Um, you're about halfway through your tour. Yeah. About. Is that it seems. I yeah. think. Yep. And. Um, so you're, you're here in California. We're thrilled to have you here performing locally tonight. Um, but I want to actually talk about somebody else's tour for a second. A couple weeks ago, you joined the Rolling Stones on stage yeah, in Philadelphia. They need more press. Let's do that. And, well, I just want to know, how did that happen? Like, did they call you? Like, they're, what is that moment like? They're desperate. I mean, they're they desperate. just don't. <laughs> they're trying really hard to matter in music. And they, they, uh. That's been what their whole tour is about. They've had a lot of people do that in various cities. Uh, they're the consummate sort of jam band. I mean, they really are all about getting up there and playing music and bringing it. And, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, what's it sound like to collaborate? What's it, what's it like to bring in other formats of music? And throughout the tour, they had, they, it sort of ran the gamut of people that, that set in. We had a few country people. We had a lot of rock and rollers, a lot of blues guys, a lot of, you know, and you're seeing their influences, which is kind of cool. And then I'm not one of their influences, but I am influenced <laughs> by some of the same people they are. You know, they actually have a, a very heavy country base, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, they were a great country band when they wanted to be on certain songs. And so um, and there's this common language with us. Uh, I've gotten to know Ronnie Wood pretty well. I'm starting to get to know Mick pretty well. And it's like you you realize that guitar is is sort of the universal mm -hmm. language music is, is especially but guitar players have this really this really sort of foreign thing my wife as a as an actress is envious because she's seen me jump in with everybody from the rolling stones to bb king to um you know like keb mo is a friend of ours and i'll just get up in the middle of a blues night with him mm -hmm. and she's like it's like you speak French, right? You know, right, right, right. <laughs> it's like it's like this foreign language, and you guys start, you know, and then we get backstage, and it's like, you know, what pedal is that that you're using? Well, that's brand new. It's this new analog delay, and it's wonderful. And the next thing you know, you're off in this right another language. Yeah, this yeah. French competition yeah. that she doesn't understand. <laughs> well, it's interesting because you you're you know one of these amazing country artists who's a, a great singer songwriter, but like you said, you're a killer you know guitar lead. I didn't I didn't say well that. well I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say that. So, like, like you said. <laughs> well, right, right. So this... Um, this is like between two ferns up it here. It is, between two uh, <laughs> streams here. So nap pods. Um, that's like, we have nap pods at Google, which is a place... Nap pods? Nap pods. We have those on the bus. Those are called bunks. <laughs> and we, uh, right. And so we were actually joking about between two ferns and saying we should start one that's between two nap pods. It's where you go and kind of take All a right. rest. Bring anyway, up. anyway, we can give you a tour of the nap pods next. So... Um, and, and I know that some of the Grammys that you won are for, for, for some of that instrumental stuff. So how do you balance kind of that, you know, the, the guitar interest and then also, you know, your talents in sing, singing and songwriting? Um, my sound man always accuses me of singing to get to the next solo. Uh, because truthfully, when you've sung a song a million times, and then there's, like, whether that be celebrity or alcohol or one of these songs that, that go back a few years um you know there's only so many ways you can sing the verse mm -hmm. before people leave and and think you've lost your mind he's changing the melody too much um but here comes the solos uh -huh. and for me it's like i could add a little i could go into a pentatonic thing here and that really make that kind of cool and so that's and that's, that's really the yeah at, at, at our heart my band and I are, are, are a bit of a jam band in spite of the technology that we use and the video we've got to sync up with and the way that you've got to keep the hits also recognizable. There's sure. always those those moments in the show where you can you can have free expression. Mm -hmm. And uh, that I think that's what will keep me going past, I, you know, uh, remaining nameless. There was a country artist who's a big hero of mine that I had a conversation with once, and I said, and it was early in my career, and I said, 
are you playing many shows this year? And he said, yeah, I'm doing, you know, I don't know, 40 or 50. And, and I said, uh, and he said, what about you? I said, I'm doing 200. Of course, when you're new, you do. You'll play 200 dates a year just because you, you need to. You need to. Yeah, people need to see you play. And, right. And he said, uh, I said, oh, golly, how do you do that? And I said, well, you know, I love it. And he said, give it time. <laughs> and, and he's right about one thing. It, there's parts of it that get old, but one thing that I that never gets old to me is the I'm I'm there for sound check. I mean, I can't wait to play right. and jam and and uh, see how my amps sound that day because every day is different and make my guitar tech go nuts because I've got a new pedal I want to try on a song and here he is, you know, and something will go wrong and the cable will get, you know, because I messed with it. But that's the fun of it. That's great. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the tour. Um, this was at Google. We have this thing called the Dory, and that's where we get um, crowdsourced questions. So some of the questions oh. I'm going to ask you are from the audience, essentially, and everyone will vote on if they like the question or, d or dislike the question. <laughs> and what about that's the answer? Really they vote on that because yeah. <laughs> that's really going to be disappointing. So um, one question they had is, what's it like to play in California um, versus other places that you have been touring? I would say, and I, I run the risk of, of making other people mad, okay. but I would say this is our favorite state. Really? To tour in. Um, <laughs> you don't say that everywhere? I don't say that everywhere. I, okay. I, I have never, you I can't say first. that about another state. I mean, it's fun to play Texas, it's fun to play Georgia, but overall, best, but there's always cities in those, and I won't name them, but there's always a city <laughs> in each of those states that I'm talking about that you dread a little bit because it's like they're a little jaded or they're, okay. but it is not the case in California for cool. us. There okay. is not a bad place we play. Great. Knock on wood. Let's, let's hope. That's great. I love that. And so um, towards the end of the tour, you're heading um, to international destinations. And another question from um, the Dory is, you know, you're one of not many country artists can fill as many seats as you can internationally. And so... Feel as many seats? Fill, 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 fill as many seats. seats. Got gotcha. Butts and right. seats. Right. Or feel. Feel as many seats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so what what do you attribute some of that to? Could you speculate? Um, song. I think it's always songs. I think that uh, the minute you start to think it's you and not the songs you're singing <laughs> is the minute you're about to... <laughs> Almost over. You're about to... <laughs> pee in a bucket backstage <laughs> in, a, in a kitchen or something you know you're you're about to Ooh, you're about to get arrested speeding <laughs> yeah going through your your subdivision and, <laughs> and then flip off the cop and you know I don't know because um, you're starting to think it's you you're starting to think you're larger than life and and it's truthfully it's always about songs it's mm -hmm. about because um, I I've, I've always been of the belief that any artist that sang the 22 hits 22 you know chart toppers i've had mm -hmm. would be a, a star probably as big or maybe bigger than me you know <laughs> in that sense and because i'm lucky that i found some that were wonderful i'm mm -hmm. lucky to have written a few that really worked and and uh it really comes down to that people when they say that's my story that mm -hmm. you're singing um or we use this at our wedding or you know we played this at, at a funeral or we you that's how you get people that's to go see you, you play i think seats. songs songs so um speaking of songs that mean something to people um I, I grew up in kentucky i love southern comfort zone which is one of the hits off of your latest album wheelhouse and i don't know if you guys have seen this video um but in the video you the director's mic sitting right there oh, okay director Actually, director jim shea he directed okay so in this video you mic up a tractor yeah You've got cameos from an elephant and some giraffes, and right. you hit eight countries in eight days. Is that right? We did. So wh where did this idea come from? Tell me about tell tell me about this video. It's really that's one of the most unique, fun things we've ever attempted. And what that what that was, we the song is about. Uh, for those of you who are watching that may not know, it's a, the song "Southern Comfort Zone." Sounds like we're singing about drinking. Right. Alcohol in, in like the back of a truck. But we did, we purposefully on this album set out to write songs that were the, they sort of zigged when you thought they would zag. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, they were supposed to be unpredictable and, and new angles on topics. And so the angle that we took with it was um, you are literally 
really the most thankful for this place you're from when you see the world. And and you appreciate new things about it. Like you come back from a place like, I, one of my charities I'm involved with is Haiti. You come back from a place like Haiti and you, you're just excited about the fact that your faucets work. Right. You come back from Paris and you think to yourself, What's that? Where's that bakery that's really good? That's similar. It's not quite as good, but right. it's similar to that. An inspiration. That yes. place, yeah, yeah. Or, or Italy, and you're like, I heard a new artisan coffee shop opened up. I'd like to see if they're doing a cappuccino anywhere near, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and you come back enlightened and and with a new appreciation of where you're from. So how do you illustrate that in a video? Um, ironically, around the time we were going to do the video, it was time for me to go to Europe, and we were we had a bunch of tour dates and. Um, London and Sweden and uh, Norway and uh, I'm trying to think of where France, else. France, I think, was in the video. Well, France is in the video. We ended up just going there. We didn't oh. play there. Um, that was a, an excuse to <laughs> spend <laughs> to a day run through the running of through the streets of Paris. <laughs> um, and so all I knew when we started the video was I called Jim and I said, here's this idea. The idea is that it starts with a tractor. The tractor is the groove of the song. It established the, the click track with that. I start the thing, we mic it with an acoustic. I hand the acoustic off, I walk out of frame, I'm throwing on a jacket, and I walk into frame in, say, Stockholm, mm -hmm. which is the first stop of the tour. So that was all I knew about that. And then okay. we are gonna wind up back at the tractor at the end. So Fun. whatever happens in the middle happens. And so I edited that using uh, an editing program on my laptop Really? as we would shoot it, yeah. Edited that myself. You and we, did? Yep. And wow. We would shoot during the day. We would go. Uh, I'm a big tech nerd, so this Love is this. I'm very, very excited about being here. Um, <laughs> we would shoot during the day, and we would go to. We started in Stockholm. We got to Stockholm, and it's freezing, and uh, and I I know the jacket, and I had a, a whole case full of jackets to choose from. Okay. And I knew that was going to be... you were the doing your own wardrobe as yeah, well? Yeah, basically. It, like yeah, <laughs> that's all we... We had no crew the Brad, whatsoever. <laughs> the Brad Paisley DIY video. I love it. It, it's it amazing. really was. <laughs> and it, and I, all I knew is we were going to get to Stockholm and I was going to throw on the same jacket I was walking out of frame in and make it match okay. to where it looks like I'm one yep. arm's in the jacket, the next arm comes in as you walk in across a bridge over the... whatever the river is. Uh, and then... And then we then came this idea of, well, I should run. If I'm, if I'm going through Europe, I mean, there's no way I'm going to make it through all these countries walking. Okay. <laughs> so we took off. So I take off running through the streets. And, and then I had Kendall, my uh, uh, keyboard player in the band. I was like, okay, run bus. And we would get a taxi. And Jim would sit in, like, the trunk of the taxi with his camera <laughs> as the taxi would drive about 10 mile an hour down the road. And I'm just running behind it. Yeah, I was it. wondering how, how all those shots And I would take off the jacket. And I'd, like, run beside the taxi. And I'd throw the jacket to Kendall. And he'd throw me another one. And I'd be putting it on as I'm trying to sing. So it, lo it really looks like it. It, yeah, the video is real. And yeah, and we would edit, and we would get to like Dublin was the last city, and we get to Dublin at the end of this week, and we're we one day, and I'm editing. Luckily, I was editing as we went. You have so much went. time when you're on tour, I'm sure. We have at least <laughs> flights, and you okay. actually do have downtime okay. in the daytime. Okay. You have at least all that, and and I'm sitting there editing, and I went, I never threw the blue jacket off. So here I am. I'm. Uh, I've got to get it. So we need a street that looks like Italy. So here we go. We go. We went out and found like a cobblestone street in Dublin. Tried to make it look like the sun was out. Oh my gosh! And threw the jacket off there. Oh my gosh! You had to do a little reshoot. <laughs> yeah. So it was a little pickup shot. You know. I love that. That's great. So yeah, if you haven't if you haven't watched the video, check it out. It's it's not your average country music video. I've got to give you that. And no. A really creative. There's also a really. I love the backstory. There's a ham of a giraffe in it. There's a giraffe that. Is actually a, what? a ham of a giraffe. A it's a ham? giraffe. It's it's a ham. I mean, this giraffe wants to be on camera. Oh, a ham of a giraffe. If you have a camera, <laughs> it's a. I don't mean an edible giraffe. <laughs> it's more of a. It's a. Uh, it's a giraffe that really wants to be a star. It's it's. It was. It's the it's the giraffe at the Nashville Zoo. His name is Congo, and it's the biggest dog. You. It's yeah. like a Great Dane, but you know. But a giraffe. Two stories high. <laughs> yeah. And. If you have a camera, that giraffe goes to it. That's great. It's really bizarre. It would just really. I'll have to go rewatch. Yeah, he's in it. Keep, so. keep an eye out for the giraffe. So, um, so that, that's a great story. So, um, another uh, single, your, I think your latest single, the I Can't Change the World. Yeah. Um, so, talk to me a little bit about the origins of that song. It sort of starts out at these kind of larger, um, yeah, larger with larger issues, and then comes 
kind of to a personal level. So well, th this is uh, when we launched this single, which it came out yesterday. So it's uh, it's brand spanking new, latest, yes, latest as in don't play it in concert yet. They don't know it. So, <laughs> um, but uh, hopefully will. Um, it uh, it's it sort of feels like with every single you have a theme that you follow that you chase as an artist that will take you several four or five months at least to go up the chart have people sort of start to recognize mm -hmm. it and really sort of digest it mm -hmm. and um this is an important one to me because i feel like the the hook of the song for those who haven't heard it is uh i can't change the world but i can change yours and it's it's about you're singing it to a girl in the song it's a romantic notion but the song the, the opening line of the song is a bomb goes off in a far off city and you deal with the fact that this world basically thanks to the 24-hour news cycle and, and the connectedness of technology, feels a lot crazier than it ever did. Mm -hmm. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I imagine there were train wrecks in Europe when I was a kid, um, but I never heard about it. If I did, it was, in the, it was a blurb in the paper right. days later. Right. But we grieve in real time with, you know, things that happen in Indonesia, things that happen in in Europe mm -hmm. and and uh, in Afghanistan or you name it and it's all very overwhelming for a human being I don't know if we're equipped to sort of uh, internalize all of that yeah. you know we have all of us have our own situations in our lives and um, the singer of the song reaches the conclusion that his cause is this girl and that he is going to make the world a better place for her mm -hmm. and in some ways, it's a larger theme for life in the sense that we're all sort of searching, I think, for whatever it is that gives our lives meaning. And I think that, truthfully, if you want your life to matter, then then maybe save someone else, mm -hmm. you know, right. make someone else's life better and yours mattered. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and in that sense, it's a it's a very large theme, but it's it's meant to be romantic. OK, great. So, um, so you started out, you grew up in West Virginia, right? Yes. And, um, right next to Kentucky, right next to Kentucky. Yeah. My family's from Elkins. Oh, Virginia. congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, t in West Virginia, you, you started out playing at Jamboree USA, right? Which was a, yeah. an old weekly radio program. Yes. So back then, um, you, I think you, you played on the program for many years. Yeah. Okay. I started when I was 13 on there. Okay. And so back then, you know, radio was a primary force, and it certainly is, continues to be now, but is one of, you know, a number of things in kind of the music landscape. You have elaborate tours, you have YouTube, yeah. you have all the social media. So how do you, I mean, it's, just, it's interesting how, you know, that we're sitting here at Google today where, you know, there's, um, you know, so much is, is digital and technology and video, and it's a far cry from, you know, w when life was radio and three stations on the TV. So... Um, how do you balance all, you know, all of these new outlets and what's your approach kind of to bringing your music and, and kind of also you through social media and, and things like YouTube? It's interesting. It, it, you know, it's, it's a constant challenge to try and get people's attention. I mean, you can put all this time into editing a video where you run through Paris and, and have all these sort of segues through Europe and trying to sort of bridge the southern mentality with the sort of world view uh -huh. and and then you're upstaged by you know david at the dentist and <laughs> and uh <laughs> by a little kid that's you know right on codeine so it's a um you're like oh we almost had it right right yeah you know or, or whatever and and so it's uh, an interesting time that way but it's also you have so many opportunities to to get your music out there. I think it's always about connecting the dots and I'm a very complicated person. I'm very hard to figure out in some ways. I mean, my, I have songs that run the gamut and right. some of them have made people mad and some of them have um, been completely misunderstood and some have been, um, you know, totally embraced. Mm -hmm. and, and my fans have a really good idea of who I am, I think, at this point. And the, the goal is to try and get those people that misunderstand me to to find something there and and you know Twitter is a is a great tool you have YouTube which is such a great tool because you can you can be in the middle of of a tour and film you know my drummer 
I don't know, throwing up behind his drum kit when he gets food poisoning, <laughs> and the next thing you know, that's bigger than the video we right. just made <laughs> or something. And you know, and and you, uh, it's a great way to connect the dots and let people feel a part of it because they just want to feel a part of something. Right. I think in this right. world, um, if I don't really know if we do it exactly right, but if you have any ideas, this is the room to ask. <laughs> on how I well, make it I think you have you have a lot um, you have a lot of content. I think you know on all of your social platforms, and it seems that you're really you know. Your videos are creative, and you know you're you're finding a lot of ways to engage with people. So I think it's I think it's great. Um, one thing actually, um, I want to ask, and then we'll take a question from the audience. So, on YouTube, you know about this thing on Google and YouTube, we have autofill, right? Which which um, populates um, some frequent searches, <laughs> and this is one that I found, and <laughs> <laughs> it says. So the the autofill is Brad Paisley pranks, and it has oh, there's a bunch Brad of Brad Paisley yeah. pranks Blake Shelton. Pranks Carrie Underwood, pranks the band Carrie. It goes on and on, this long list. I don't know if you guys can see it, all the way to Brad Paisley, Pranks Wife. So what's this? I mean, a lot of your a lot of your songs are funny. Pranks Wife by proposing. <laughs> um. A lot of a lot of your songs are funny, and and um, you know you 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 clearly have a pulse on humor and pop culture. And but but what's the story with these pranks? Did you grow up as a prankster? Are you always watching your back on the road? Like what's what's the deal with? I the, am watching my back. <laughs> um, Chris Young, as you know, is our opening act here, and uh, he uh, tonight, and he is just out of the hospital with uh, he had a staph infection, and he it was a scary thing. But we, I talked to him this week, and he's doing better. And I had heard rumors that he might have to do his show sitting down this evening, which I was like, this is awesome. Get water guns, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'm, what I'm, a what a welcoming. Um, I you know I'm one of these people that that I like you if I'm picking on you. Okay. And. Uh, was always that way, and I've always been a bit of a prankster, I think. And I don't always come off like that, but I'll, I, man, I'll find that. I could have worked for the CIA, I'm telling you. Because <laughs> my mind just <laughs> thinks that way, like, oh, you know what we could do to mess them up, <laughs> you know. And we've done everything from, from you know, like with, with uh, Kelly Pickler opening for us, we created a fake intro video. She had a video that was the typical, Kelly Pickler is... <laughs> You know, was on American Idol, and it was her intro video, and we changed it with a video called "You Be the Judge," which was um, I took photos off wire image and doctored her <laughs> to where, like the early photos of her on American Idol, we made her look like a twelve-year-old boy <laughs> on the upper torso, and then, and then the post photos, we made her look like Dolly Parton, and. And interviewed a and interviewed a plastic surgeon and had his opinion, uh, Doctor Doctor Emerson Biggins, and um, and he gave his opinion on whether or not he, she had sought Answer. enhancement, and um, and then it just left the qu audience with question was so please welcome Kelly Pickler, you be the judge, and she comes and that was her intro video and she had to walk out wearing the tightest tank top you've ever seen. <laughs> And she's like cussing me out of backstage, course, of but we're course. we're good friends, and she took it really so well. So funny. Um, but the, it's that that's the kind of stuff we do, and and uh, it goes back to when I was five. I I pulled a the ultimate prank on my mother. My dad's here. I, I pulled a prank on my mother when I was five years old. She told me I had to be. <laughs> this is so wrong, but it's so who I am. I had to be in bed by ten o'clock on New Year's Eve. I was five years old. I knew that all the action happens at midnight right. on New Year's Eve. Okay. And, and she's like, but she told my grandpa, who was my best friend, and he's watching me, and her, her father put him in bed at 10. We're leaving and going to see his uncle in the morning at like 8 a.m., so he can't be, I don't want him tired. And I'm mad because I wanted to stay up and see the ball drop, you know, in, in New York. And, and, and he's, and they leave, and he's, and I'm, my wheels are spinning. How can I stay up till midnight? And finally, he asks me one time, he goes back around. My dad used to have this bar in the house. And he sees sort of the, he sees the bar. And he's, I think he might be having a beer. And he asks me, he says, Brad, does your, and we used to have deep discussions. Does your mom ever drink alcohol? And I said, all the time. <laughs> and, he, I, and he said, what do you mean? I said, oh, sometimes dad has to carry her in. <laughs> I don't know how I knew that. And and he's like, S really? And I went into detail about the nights when she's slurring her speech no. and everything. I mean. This is a YouTube video. If yeah, you well, if it's, if I should recreate it with that little child actors. And anyway, they get home at 1, and I'm standing there with my arms crossed in the kitchen, wide awake. He's kept me up for evidence. 
And she walks through the door and says, what are you doing up? And, and he says, never mind him. What are you doing? I didn't raise you like this woman. <laughs> and then he's, she's like, well, what are you talking about? And he's going off. My mother never drinks. <laughs> But she used to love Kahlua in her coffee, and so I go find a bottle of Kahlua in the in the uh, <laughs> in the bar and show it to him. And he's he doesn't know what Kahlua is. He's an old like Kentucky redneck. He's looking at it. It's a 80 proof. It's that's all he needs. This is hers. And then he goes off, and my dad's saying, "You're out of line, Warren." And I remember this just. And and he goes over to her. He says, "You did this to her." <laughs> he storms off down the alley. She goes upstairs crying and. <laughs> And my dad, or no, he's still there. My dad says to, to me, or she's saying, Brad, tell him he's, tell him you're lying. <laughs> and I look at him and go, I wish I could, Mom. <laughs> and then she goes upstairs. He goes down to his house. And I had to call him and apologize <laughs> and tell him I was lying. <laughs> and I got in trouble. Oh, Happy New Year, right? <laughs> yeah. That's me. So funny. Um, so we don't have much more time. I think we'll take one question from the audience. Okay, I'll, I'll make it good then. One comment, one question. Number one, I love your shirt because I think you have all the Google colors. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, thanks. For Did that on purpose, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, number two, here at Google, we're really big on work-life balance. Um, and you sound so busy with writing songs, singing songs, all your tours. So can you give us a little advice on how you do it? I would sleep very little, and that's not good <laughs> advice. But I, I, uh, I think that it seems busier than it really is when you uh, are in the public eye. So I have people say, you must never see your family. But I saw them yesterday before I flew out. Um, and I'll see them again before the weekend's over. And then I'm home for four days uh, and I'll cram. And it's sort of like, you know, if I'm home four days out of seven on, a, on any given week, I make sure those four days are a heavy majority for my kids and wife. And uh, and in that sense, I spend more time maybe with my kids than somebody who has a, a nine to five day job that doesn't get home till six or so. And their kids probably go to bed at eight. So they have maybe two hours at the end of the day where they got to catch up. And in my case, you know, we have days together that are all day events. and. Um, and then, you know, it's sort of like when the family goes to bed, I'll write or I'll work. And there's chunks of time where I work really hard making an album for six months where your mind is sort of hazy and you're out there thinking about it. And then there's other times when uh, I'm doing less. And um, it's, it is a challenge. And, and you know, and wives are good at reminding you that your balance <laughs> is off a little bit and in a good way. And, uh, and you're... Your kids are good at reminding you of that too, because they'll say you're, you know, in the middle of me writing, I'll be typing a lot of things in a, in a phone or a, a tablet or something, and my kids will say, "You never look up from that," and then you, it's that's a sign. It's like, okay, wait a minute, I need to put that down. Mm -hmm. um, life is balanced, though, and uh, you are your balance. You are that person, you know. I think you can't say, "Well, no, I'm really the, I'm really their dad. I just never see him." <laughs> it doesn't. Ca <laughs> then you're not. You know, you have to find that. I think. Um, so, so what's um, what's next for you? Are, are you the type of songwriter where you have a lot, you know, kind of going on? You're you're writing on the road, and you have a lot of material, like for your next album, or are you focused right now on on the tour now, the Beat the Summer tour, and and Wheelhouse, and and then you'll take a break. What what's what's kind of next for you? I'm sort of I'm not writing songs much right now because I think that you have to recharge. I've I heard a great songwriter once say you need input. You know, just like any computer, it needs input to have any sort of output. And uh, you have to live mm. a little bit and observe, especially read, um, which I just learned to do. Um, <laughs> it's a whole new world. I mean, <laughs> I'm learning right along with my six-year-old. Um, no, it's really a, uh, it's about that. And so this is more of a absorption time okay. for me. But we have some really cool things we're about to do. I can't really announce it yet, but we're working on a really large way of illustrating this new single in a way that is bigger than a music video and is, is more of a, a strong sort of case for what the point of the song is. And, um, and you know, and in that sense, that's the fun part about being in music is I think music now can be this multi-fingered 
thing where you have all of these various channels that you that you get to do if you are successful. People know your name. They're interested in, you know, what you're doing for some reason. And um, anything you can do to help the point of something you believe in is is fun, mm -hmm. you know, in that sense. So when um, when should we look out for this? I think in a week, thing? in a week or two, oh, we'll soon. start talking about it. Yeah. Great. Um, if, if, if all goes well, okay. we're, we're working on, you know, we're sort of in talks to do something cool. And um, if you don't hear about it, then it didn't happen. And something fell through. <laughs> right. Well, um, I think we're about out of time. Uh, we're going to go give you a bit of a Google tour now. But thank you so much for joining us. We're thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for doing what you do. Thanks for taking the time. I never knew it took so many people to put like white and blue search results up on screen. <laughs> it's like crazy. There's thousands more of us too. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.